What's up guys, it's Riley with DIY Things That Fly and today we're going to be talking about how a drone works and how you can build one yourself. If you go online and you google DIY drone, you'll find tons of pictures of quadcopters with wires hanging everywhere and parts all over the place and it looks like a spaghetti mess of wiring that's impossible to build. That's actually a common misconception. Building a drone really isn't that hard. There's only a handful of components and you probably already know what some of them are. Quadcopter has four motors. This is also a motor. This is also a motor. So is this. Now, each individual motor needs something to make it spin. That something is called a speed controller. This speed controller does exactly what it sounds like. It controls the speed of this motor. This is also an ESC. This is another ESC. And this is another ESC. It can make it go fast, it can make it go slow, it can make it go forwards, it can make it go backwards. Now, any drone, big drone, small drone, racing drone, filming drone, has a frame. The frame is basically what everything mounts to, and nowadays they're mostly made out of carbon fiber. The reason for this is because carbon fiber is really light and really strong, which makes a lot of sense. The lighter it is, the faster it flies, the longer it flies. The stronger it is, the more crashes it can take before you have to buy new parts. Whether it's this, or this, or this, or this, it's still a frame. Now, every single component on the quadcopter mounts onto the frame. That includes the motor and the speed controllers. Let's go ahead and just draw ourselves a nice little frame. All right, so here's our frame. It's a tad bit demented, but it's still a frame. So let's go ahead and add what we know already. There are four motors and one goes on each arm. All right, there's our beautiful drone with four motors on it. Now let's go ahead and mount the speed controllers. Most of the time on racing drones, the speed controllers are mounted out on the arms because there's not usually a lot of space inside of the body for parts. All right, so now we've got our motors, we've got our speed controllers, we've got our frame, and we're good to go fly. Riley, what the hell? You're missing like half the components. Right, I think, I think Theo's got a point. While we're at it, let's go ahead and connect the speed controllers to the motors. As you saw earlier, each brushless motor has three wires coming out of it. These wires are called phase wires, and they connect to the speed controller. Now, just as a side note, whenever I say the word connect, I mean by soldering. Everything we do here is done by soldering. So all the big wires, all the small wires, they all get soldered. And if you have no idea what that word means, don't worry, because we'll be going over it in the next few videos in the series. Alright, so now I've gone and drawn the motor phase wire connections to all the speed controllers. I think I've done a rather beautiful, amazing, artistic job. But anyways, if you're wondering which wire plugs into which port, of the speed controller and the motor. Since there are three, how do you know which goes to which? That's actually something we'll cover in a later topic. Because right now we're just doing the basics, like bare bone, what plugs into what, general how does this fly video. But later on I'll explain how a brushless motor works and how a speed control works and how every other part works, so stay tuned. Speaking of other parts, now we've got a power distribution board. So, You'll notice this power distribution board has pluses and minuses all over the place, all over it. That's for electricity. That's for the battery voltage. Here's our battery. So this battery is actually a lithium polymer battery, which is used on almost all drones because they're very high uh, energy dense. They have very high energy density, which means that the batteries are really light, really small, and they contain a lot of power. So if you notice this yellow connector here on the battery, there's another yellow connector here. This connector is called an XT60, and right now it's currently the most popular connector used on all hobbyist like DIY build-yourself drones. This connector connects the power distribution board. If you'll see here, there's a positive and negative right here, and there's battery written on top of the positive and negative. That's where you plug the battery into. Now for those of you guys who are new to basic electricity concepts, red is positive and black is negative. So anywhere you see a plus, there's a red wire. Anywhere you see a minus, there should be a black wire. The picture I have here is actually reversed, so let's fix that really quickly. All right, so there we go. We've got our very nicely, very accurately drawn connection. Of course, in real life, this will probably be done better. And now we have a connector that plugs the power distribution board into the battery. What this power distribution board does is it just distributes the power, just like it sounds. There are four different ports, the positive and minus, four really big ports, and each port each corner here corresponds to one of the motors. Now, different quadcopters have lots of different shaped power distribution boards, but they all do the same exact thing, which is take the power from the battery and send it to everything else on the quad. So, on each speed controller, there's also a positive and negative. It's a little hard to see from here, but when we do a build video later on, you'll be able to see it clearly. 
The positive just connects to the red, and the negative just connects to the minus on every single corner. I've actually just realized that this battery connector here is supposed to go to this port and this port. I accidentally drew it to this port and this port. When we're building it ourselves, let's not do that. This goes to the port here in the center that says battery on it. All right, there we go. We've got the power wires for the battery hooked up over here. We've got the power wires to all the speed controllers hooked up to the power distribution board. Now when we plug in the battery, this board gets power. It sends the power to all the speed controllers, which send the power to all the motors. So everything we have so far is all powered, all is going well. Now, if you're looking really closely on this board, you see a lot of components on it. You're thinking, Riley, if it's just distributing power, why are there so many parts on it? What is that for? Well, to distribute power, you don't actually need anything to be on this board at all. It just has to run the wires in parallel, which if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. But all these components on the board actually regulate the voltage. This battery over here specifically is a 14.8 volt battery. Most drones fly with batteries that are either 14.8 volts or 11.1 volts. Well, most drones are size anyway. But this part over here, which is actually the brain of the quadcopter, which we call the flight controller, runs on 5 volts. It can't take the 16.8 volts, it'll just explode. It needs 5 volts from this board over here. So that is what the 5 volt is for as well. Now you'll also notice, not only is there a 5 volt port, but there's also a 12 volt port. And that's because not all components in a quadcopter run on either 5 or 12 volts. Depending on the parts you use, because a lot of different companies sell a lot of different types of parts, some will, some will need to run on 12 volts. There are six different pads. One of them says CAM, which is short for camera, and one of them says VTX. If you get into the drone racing craze and you build your own drone, and you actually follow through with all of this, you're going to be hearing the phrase VTX a lot. VTX is just short for video transmitter. This is a video transmitter. Something that works hand in hand with a video transmitter is a camera. There's our video transmitter on the quadcopter, there's our camera on the quadcopter. Obviously in real life it'll be a little bit neater. What the camera does is pretty obvious, it just sees. What the video transmitter does is it takes that camera's feed and it sends it wirelessly. Now that feed can be picked up on goggles, it can be picked up on screens, can be picked up on monitors. Nowadays, the most common way of flying your drone FPV or first person view is with the pair of goggles. The way this talks to this is again through the power distribution board. On the port that says VTX, there's a plus, minus, and a signal cable. The signal cable just says VTX on it. So, on your video transmitter, there will be a negative cable, there will be a positive cable, and there will be a yellow cable. Most of the time it's yellow, sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's white, but again, most of the time it's yellow. That yellow cable is the signal cable. Everything that it needs to take in, everything that it needs to transmit is through that signal cable. So, we'll wrap the wires. It's impossible to see yellow sharpie, so let's cover that with blue, just for now. All right, it's a bit messy, but you get the concept. This connects to this through the wiring. Now the camera has the same exact wiring. There's a plus, there's a minus, and there's a signal. So again, Positive power, negative power, and then signal cable, which contains all the information coming from the camera. All right, there we go. This power distribution board, by default, sends five volts of power to the camera and five volts of power, I believe, to the video transmitter. Most video transmitters and cameras nowadays will be just fine, just happy running off five volts, so nothing to change here. So again, just a quick overview. Power distribution board is kind of the center right now. Got the speed controllers connected to it, which connect to the motors. Then, connecting the power distribution board, we have the camera and the video transmitter. The camera gets power from here, the video transmitter gets power from here, and the signal cable from here, the signal output goes all the way through the board into the video transmitter and sent to a goggle wireless headset. So now it looks like it's just about done, but there's one more thing to do, and it's the most important and essential part of the quadcopter, the flight control. Flight control usually goes directly on top of the power distribution board, and separated with some nylon spacers or standoffs. There are a lot, a lot of ports on this flight control. You don't need to know what most of them do. Don't worry about it at all. The ports on this board change for every single board there are, and there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of flight controllers out there. Right now, all you gotta know is that this is the brain. The flight control, or FC as it's abbreviated, has a ton of different sensors on it. That allows for flight control algorithms and flight stabilization algorithms. The flight control controls every single motor. The way it controls each motor is by sending outputs to the speed controllers, and the speed controllers then send outputs to the motors. All of this is happening thousands of times a second to keep your craft in the air and level. 
we're just gonna go ahead and connect each speed controller to the board so that we know this goes to this. You don't need to know where it goes to on this, you just need to know it gets its signals and controls from this. I'm just gonna go ahead and symbolize that with some purple Sharpie. All right, we're almost done. There's two more things to do. First thing we've got to do out of those two is get power to the flight controller. The flight controller doesn't get power from these speed controllers. It just sends signals to them. It gets power from the 5 volt port on the power distribution board over here. So over here we're just going to go ahead and hook it up again. Not sure where on this board it hooks up to, but right now it's just a concept. I'm just going to hook it up to this board by drawing. Alright, there we go. Now this has got power. Alright, so that's good and everything seems about done, but there's no way to control it. This is a receiver. It hooks up to a remote control transmitter like this, or this, or this, or even this. Put that right over here. This receiver has the same exact type of connection to the flight controller as anything over here. What the receiver does is exactly what it sounds like. It receives inputs from your remote control or transmitter, or you'll hear the abbreviation TX for transmitter and RX for receiver. So the receiver is over here, but one thing I couldn't add on the printout was an antenna. Just couldn't really draw a line. But all receivers have at least one or two antennas, and we'll get into why you need an antenna later on. Alright, so there's our nice antenna. And again, this has the same exact connection as the video transmitter and the video receiver. Might be a different connector, but it's the same type of connection. It has a positive, it has a negative, and it has a signal cable. Now in this case, the signal cable is the signal from your remote control. All of the inputs you make on the control sticks everything you do to keep it flying in the air goes to the brain here. The flight control interprets all that information and then sends it to all the motors and speed controllers. For example, if you want to go forward, you push the stick forward. When you push the stick forward, the signal goes from the receiver and the flight controller, and the flight controller says to the back two motors, hey, go faster. So these two spin up, the drone leans forward, and it flies forward like that. It's pretty neat. hooked up here. Again, the signal's blue because I can't really see yellow and white show up on this cardboard. And sure, all the wiring looks like a mess from above. And sure, everything is just all over the place. There's bits of white paper hanging everywhere and you're staring at a sheet of cardboard with a guy who can't write because he doesn't have a left hand. But at least you've got the concept. At least you know how this works. Now the last thing we do before the video closes is propellers go on each motor. All four propellers spin four different ways. In fact, they spin these directions, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, and the reason they do that is because if all of these were to spin clockwise, the drone itself would spin clockwise the entire time because of the motor torque. So these basically cancel each other out, and those are all the basics to building a drone. Hopefully I didn't confuse you guys too much, hopefully this is kind of followable, and hopefully I've gotten you interested in building your own drone. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go down in the comments, leave a like, leave some feedback, let me know. If you want to continue with this series, click over here. When I finish the next video, the next video will be up and in this corner. If you want to watch some epic drone flight video, check out over here my other channel, Team Icarus RC. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, subscribe so you'll be notified. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Riley with DIY Things That Fly, and I'll see you next time.